Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat pagi tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dikasihi sekalian. Um, hello and, and welcome everybody uh, to this particular live session. So today we are going to discuss and um, also learn something about occupational safety and health. So we are so glad today because uh, our examiner and our presenter Mr. Muhammad Fitri, Muhammad Jamil, uh, assistant pharmacist uh, attached to the ILKKM Sungai Buloh are going to present Uh, a topics uh, with regard to the uh, presentation and also assignment given to them. So with uh, us today is uh, Puan Mazdila. Okay, Puan Mazdila is one of the examiner. Uh, Assalamualaikum Puan Mazdila. Puan Mazdila, how are you? Waalaikumsalam, selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Puan Azlina, how are you today Puan? Uh, mute Puan, mute. Sekejap. Sorry, tak dengar suara. Okay, silakan. Puan Azlina, test, test. Puan Azlina, boleh dengar ke? Okay, never mind. Ada cat sikit. Uh, Encik Fitri, so our presenter today is Mr. Fikri, eh, Mr. Fitri. So, Mr. Fitri are going to present about occupation safety and health without further ado. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Fitri to proceed with uh, his uh, presentation. Silakan, Encik uh, Fitri. Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Uh, diucapkan kepada uh, pensyara, rakan-rakan uh, dan rakan-rakan uh, yang berada uh, secara online uh, di YouTube. So hari ini saya Muhammad Fitri Bang Muhammad Jamil, uh, pelajar post basic uh, pharmaceutical serai di ILKKM Sungai Buloh akan membentangkan pasal uh, satu uh, assessment yang kita Uh, kita jalankan di tempat uh, praktikal kita. So, um, so dia uh, kita di uh, handling of hazardous agent. So, untuk uh, handling hazardous agent, especially uh, chemical substance, benda yang pertama kita kena buat adalah uh, pakai PPE, wear PPE. Uh, be aware of any pot, uh, protective measure and emergency responses. Then, uh, uh, notify the chemical that we will, will be working with. Uh, especially when we want to diluting uh, acid or bases, always add, always add the acid and bases uh, to the solvent. Uh, example, water. So, not the other ways. So pouring the solvent into the acid or bases can cause a violent reaction and you may get hurt or burn. So after we determine the possible risk for the transport for transportation, so never remove chemical from the lab. So if you want to uh, transport the chemical between lab spaces lah. Then uh, chemical must be handled safely in order to avoid skin, eye or inhalation exposure. Oh. For PPE, personal protective equipment, for protection for eyes, uh, please uh, wear safety glasses with a side shield. This will protect your eyes from any uh, splash or spillage. Uh. Then, um, For the uh, more protection, use a splash goggles. As, uh, so this will protect you, um, will giving you more protections. For, for the more, for, for the further protection, use a full face shield for protect your eyes. So uh, protection from skin, especially for, uh, for the corrosive chemical. Um, Please uh, wear, uh, wear lab uh, nitrile glove, um, full length chemical resistant lab apron for protection. Uh, if you want to manip uh, manipulate uh, chemical substance with a corrosive effect, use a full arm length rubber glove. Uh, this will give you, giving you a uh, full protection. Lah. Um, okay. For protection 
uh, protection from inhalation. So inhalation protection. First, we must remind that never smell the chemical. So always work with uh, toxic chemical under a fume hood. So if you want diluting acid or bases, um, please working under the fume hood and make sure it is uh, working properly. Yeah. Uh, then keep the container closely tightly. Uh, so if you uh, if you after you use the chemical substance, please close the container. Has it like this? So in case is any chemical spillage. So if the spillage are mess, evacuate and seal off the lab. So notify the authorities. So make sure the mess are cleaned by the qualified personnel. Do not re-enter the lab until the supervisor give you, giving you a uh, all clear notifications. Okay. For special uh, special precaution for certain uh, chemical substance, so notify the flammability or explosive chemical that you are working with. Keep the flammable away from all initial source such as uh, Bunsen burner or hot plate. Store the flammable chemical in the dedicated and grounded storage cabinet. So they don't don't store in any places that expose. So properly dispose of chemical and waste bin. Use a chemical resistant plastic or metal container for waste disposal. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, special, uh, a special uh, warning lah. So any material used to clean up a chemical spill, example, uh, paper towel, must be disposed, uh, must be disposed properly accordingly. Uh, we must treat this. Um, we must this. Uh, we must treat this. Uh, 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 we must treat them as a chemical waste. So uh, activity number two is about uh, manual handling of environmental condition. So for activity number two, uh, we must uh, find out uh, any poster that are uh, available in the internet to the environmental conditions. So um, poster number one is about heat stress. So this poster explain about how to overcome heat stress. So um, worker with work, working with a hot um, high heat environment. So they they um, they giving us a uh, five five way uh, to uh, overcome the hazard. First, uh, develop an acclimatization plan. Uh, then set a body system, uh, schedule and encourage uh, frequent uh, rest break, uh, emphasize the need and appropriate uh, clothing. Uh, then uh, lastly, encourage the worker to drink plenty of fluid. For the uh, poster number two is about working in the cold environment. So the poster emphasize about the extreme cold environment. So what the employer should do, uh, what the law include. Lah. So what the employee employer should do is choose the equipment with the thermal insulations, material and tools that can be operated with glove. Uh, number two, train manager, supervisor and worker about the cool injury. Uh, then uh, clearly outline emergency procedures. Uh, use a body system, same as a uh, heat Heat, uh, heat stress rate, um, to watch for symptom in others. So adjust the pace or rate of work, allow time for, for a new worker to become accustomed to the conditions. Uh, provide or make sure the protective clothing is worn at or below negative uh, four degrees. For, 
for uh, poster number three, uh, they telling us about the vibration hazard. Just to about the equipment. So number one is uh, what is the hand arm vibration syndrome, HABS. So number two, they're telling us about what are the symptoms of HABS. And number two is how to reduce the risk of developing HABS. So, so how to reduce, you have to don't, first don't use a vibrating handheld power tools. Use those with the lowest vibration level that can do the job safely. So don't, it, don't, don't exceed safe usage time. Ensure the tool is in a good order. Hold tool as loosely uh, as safety allow and change gripply frequently. Uh, wear full finger glove and lastly, uh, quick smoking. So this are uh, um, how to reduce the risk of developing HABS. So the post, uh, last poster number four is about the noise hazard. So these are the basic uh, hierarchy of control. For this uh, poster tu terangkan benda yang sama juga. Uh, first eliminate the noise. Uh, physical remove the hazard. Maksudnya eliminate all the noise. The noise. Then buy acquired equipment and tools. So replace the hazard. Number three is uh, control the noise hazard. Um, means uh, isolate people from the hazard. Number four is expose time limit. So change the way people work. Uh, lastly, um, uh, PPE. Protective, uh, protect the poker with the uh, personal protective equipment. So uh, uh, PPE are the least effective uh, way lah. So the most effective uh, 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 eliminate the noise completely. So uh, that's for the activity number two. Uh, for activity number three, we must do a health risk assessment, especially on hazardous drug. Uh, these are the safety. So for me, I choose uh, the fluorouracil injections uh, from Pfizer. These are they are sixteen session. Uh, this 16 section uh, explaining about the uh, uh, one uh, the explain about the hazardous drug information that we need to know. So section one is uh, identification of the substance. Number two is about the hazardous ident uh, identifications. So the symbols and the uh, what is short and long uh, uh, hazard uh, that can be get. Uh, number three is about composition, information on ingredient. So, bahan-bahan dalam tu. So, number uh, four is first aid measure. So, in case kalau ada berlaku contact, uh, what should we do? So, number five is fire fighting measure. Uh, six is about accidentally release measure. Okay, so number seven is handling and storage, penyimpanan dan bagaimana untuk menguruskan. Number lapan is about uh, exposure control. So num number nine is uh, physical and chemical properties. Number ten is about uh, stability and reactivity. So uh, number eleven is about the toxicology information. So for the number 12 is about ecological information. Uh, should be prune, okay. So number 13 is about disposable consideration, cara untuk kita melupuskan. So 14 is about transport information. Uh, okay, then number 15 is about regulatory information. And lastly, uh, number 16 is about other information. This actually uh, the information that we provide by the is data sheet we uh, we come out uh, with uh, hazard identification and risk assessment and risk control so these are the form 
So for me, um, I observe and uh, try to do assessment in my places. Uh, so I come out with this uh, high rec form. So this is my uh, assessment. Lah. Um, there are three uh, four section. Uh, section one more on detail about the uh, unit, uh, uh, about the company, person in charge, uh, design nation. So uh, then sub, uh, who's conduct and uh, review dates. So there's a three part. First is a hazard notification. Second is a risk analysis. Uh, third, a uh, risk control. So first is a hazard notification. Uh, this drug. Um, first is a uh, receiving receiving uh, drug from the store or suppliers. So the hazard that we find out is a falling and breaking the seal, which can cause um, first a type injury, uh, exposed to the cytotoxic uh, spillage. Um, for number two activity, uh, storage in sub store. So uh, this uh, sub store actually a uh, sub store, very uh, small store. Lah. So hazard and environment is object falling from the higher places, uh, low lighting, uh, bad ventilations. So, which can cause uh, exposed to the cytotoxic agent contamination in the room. Okay. So now activity number three is a uh, uh, reconstitute cytotoxic uh, drugs. So that uh, hazard that we find out is a uh, spillage and splashing cytotoxic drugs to. To the hazardous drug on skin, eyes and inhalations then may cause a harmful symptom uh, such as uh, this, the, uh, the gastric uh, gastric injection disturbance. Okay. For activity number four, uh, dispensing drug to what? Uh, so has it, uh, we find out is uh, leaking and breaking the final, uh, leaking and breaking uh, the final product sealant. Uh. So, which can cause contamination of the toxic agent to the environment and op operator. So, uh, number five is about uh, dispose the cytotoxic waste. Uh, so, hazard defined out is exposed to the needle pre-injury and hazardous, uh, hazardous drug aerosol. So, which can cause a uh, first aid type injury or exposed to the hazardous drug aerosol. So for the second part is about the risk analysis. So they are supplied by the uh, uh, wearing a uh, safety boot, uh, industry glove, mask and goggles. Uh, so likelihood uh, about three, uh, convincible. Uh, severity uh, ne uh, number one, uh, neg negligible. Uh, so the risk uh, value around three uh, is considered low. So activity number two, the existing risk control uh, special design cabinet for the cytotoxic drug storage. So the likelihood uh, uh, convincible three, uh, severity uh, uh, negligible. Uh, so the risk value around three are uh, still low. Uh, so uh, activity number three, uh, the existing risk control, uh, they provided a biosafety cabinet, a negative pressure clean room. So likelihood, uh, most likely, most likely, severity, uh, is quite high. For the uh, activity number five, uh, the, the existing mm -hmm. risk control, uh, uh, double back, double back the final product, seal and hazardous, uh, hazard, hazard labeling on the final product. So likelihood, um, possible, uh, severity, uh, around three, uh, serious. So total risk value, um, 12, still med uh, medium. Okay. For the activ last activity, the existing risk control, uh, uh, PPE. 
kawasan toxic waste bag and shark bin. So likelihood uh, three, convisible, uh, severity also three, serious. So the risk value are nine, uh, still medium. Okay, for the this are uh, the uh, risk metric. Okay, so the last part is a uh, risk control. So these are the recommended control measure that we recommended. So for the activity activity number one, we use a uh, administrative control, a uh, safe work procedure. For we supply the cytotoxic spillage kit, uh, improve the signage and identifications in the work environment. So these are person in charge, stockkeeper. For activity number two, we use the engineering control. We isolation, we use isolation. So we improve lighting and ventilation system in the storage room. So um, uh, this uh, uh, person in charge will uh, be assistant pharmacist uh, utility two. So for the uh, recommended control measure for activity number three, we use uh, administrative control. We use a uh, job rotation. So, rotation of staff for limit the time of exposure. So, person in charge, um, maybe pharmacy in charge, uh, pharmacy CDR. Okay, for activity number four, we use administrative control, supervision and training. So we keep, we equip staff with the spillage uh, management skill and knowledge. Uh. So we uh, person in charge will be uh, a staff nurse, uh, uh, sister to train their skill, uh, their, their, their staff. And information will train their staff about the, uh, the about the uh, knowledge about how to manage spillage or leakage. Uh, so activity number five, we use uh, recommended using uh, engineering control, so redesign. So uh, we alloc uh, allocate a special room uh, for assemble the cytotoxic waste. So we uh, we um, so all the cytotoxic waste will be will be placed in the certain room. So. Uh, Uh, will be informed to the hospital support service. Uh. Okay, uh, that's all for me. Uh, thank you. So, any questions from the floor? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fitri, uh, for your presentation. So now I would like to call upon uh, Puan Mazdila or Puan Azlina lah, to proceed with the question before my question uh, prevail. Okay, silakan so, Puan Mazdila. All right, uh, let me first. Lah. Right, thank you, Encik Aizan. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Mr. Muhammad Fitri bin Muhammad Jamil. Um, I just need uh, about um, maybe two, three, three, three uh, um, comment about your presentation for today. For the first one, is which is the task one, where is the video demo, uh, Mr. Fitri? Uh, video demo, actually, uh, saya bagi link, uh, link lah, link, uh, saya upload dekat Google Drive, then saya bagi link dekat uh, I best lah. So, saya tak boleh nak tunjuk video dekat sini kan? Oh. oh. Hmm. Is it possible to we share the video or um, how Cik Azad? Um, I'm afraid. Just... Yeah, I'm afraid that video is not your video. That video is actually someone else video. I uh, afraid that one contains some, um, I mean, a significant amount of the copyrighted materials lah. So, um, basically, um, we need you to uh, show the video of you uh, giving some sort of demo. Uh, using other people works also is okay but not in the significant manner lah. So, that is also a good highlight from Puan Mazdila lah. So, Mr. Fitri sebenarnya dah buat video tu secara uh, non-editable basis. Uh, so, by right, you should take that video and then you should cut by pieces, something like that uh, and then modify it accordingly. Lah. So I watched the video already. 
I believe that is contain some sort of uh, copyrighted materials lah that cannot be shared publicly easily uh, unless you are uh, having the permission lah. So uh, by right, eh, by right, Mr. Fitri need to re bukan lah resubmit, basically re reorganize yeah, the yeah. uh, Okay, silakan Pak Majila. Alright, no problem. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. And uh, about the task two, um, is it your own poster? Oh, this is not my own poster. I'm uh, this I find out from internet lah. Um, oh, why don't you do your own? Actually, I have a limitation with my creativity lah. Maybe if I do with my poster, it's not uh, attractive lah. Uh, actually, we, hmm. we we didn't we don't want uh, but, uh the the main point is the creativity, but our main point is. What do you have from the objective from you? What do you have learned? All right, about uh, what is your substance then actually? The agent that you get for the poster? Actually, um, um, are the, there are four posters. Actually, they're telling us about the same. Lah. How uh, we want to control uh, the hazardous. Lah. Um, normally, um, um, from the four posters that I post, Actually, they're telling us about the same, cuma um, how the hazardous um, come up from. Is it a vibration, noise, uh, apa ni? Uh, heat, stress, or cold temperature. Uh, first, uh, they must see, um, they, they use a hierarchy, uh, tu lah, basic hierarchy of control. Eliminate, uh, reduce, uh, lepas tu try to expose the time limit. Uh, lastly, they use, uh, last choice is a PPE. So actually, the poor poster explaining about this uh, this thing lah. Uh, we must eliminate. Uh, lastly, last is if there is no choice, we use uh, PPE. Yeah. Alright, never mind. I think my uh, other partner will uh, uh, comment uh, more about that. So for for the task three, um, actually when we talk about high rank between. Uh, I, I I prefer that you can uh, share with us uh, with uh, with the process of the high rank, not one by one regarding the uh, what the hazard that you just find out. Did you uh, understand? Like, like the first one, what is your work activity? Um, for the first one. So, uh, receiving, receiving from um, store or suppliers. Okay. So, um, make the presentation. First is the work activity, meaning hazard identification, and then go to the risk analysis, and then go to risk control. So, we can look and we can um, uh, understand what is the activity, what is the hazard, and what you have to risk analyze and what is the control to get the hazard less and no harms. Rather you read uh, or you explain one by one, um, follow the hazard identification first and then go, go to risk analysis and then go to risk control. Okay? So, uh, okay, I, I accept this. Um, okay. Okay, so, um, overall, it's okay. Um, um quite a good um uh, presentation for the first um contestant i think <laughs> all right so i pass to the, my partner which is Aizat or Puan Azlina thank you silakan Puan Azlina okay uh, assalamualaikum selamat pagi terima kasih cik Azlina uh, Puan Masila Puan Cui okay tanya presentation dah selesai kan Okay, nice uh, presentation. Cuma ada satu perkara yang saya uh, ingin uh, ingatkan atau highlight lah. Uh, mungkin dapat buat penambahbaikan dalam masa akan datang ke apa. Okay. Uh, yang pertama ni berkaitan dengan poster tu. Uh, saya rasa se yang sebaiknya adalah satu poster yang kecil ambil. Pilih mana-mana tajuk yang ada yang tadi noise atau whatever tu. And then uh, dan juga kita dekat situ uh, macam mana cara nak kasih dia, macam mana nak handle the thing, uh, all the thing tu dalam satu poster saja. 
empat poster yang empat tunjuk dengan bahan yang berbeza atau uh, perkara yang berbeza. Okey, Cik? Okey, baik-baik. Saya nanti baik, ajakkan baik. tegur juga. Itu. Mungkin dia nak And then, uh, lagi satu pasal SGS tu. Uh, betul, dia ada satu sampai enam belas langkah. Cuma saya suka sekiranya bila you dalam kat dalam presentation ni, you boleh explain sedikit uh, SGS yang kemika yang you buat tu. Okay, apa genuine nama dia uh, sebab bila you present tu you just akan dapat terus kami penuh untuk baca dekat apa yang you paparkan, okay. So, uh, pasal pemakahan dari segi presentation apa mana ni uh, awak tentang SGS tersebut. Jadi, suka untuk saya uh, harap juga pada yang lain juga lah bila you present dari SGS uh, 1 sampai 16 uh, at least you can elaborate sikit-sikit apa kemika atau hazardous yang obat hazardous yang you obat tu. Okay, Petri? Okay, 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 saya so, tanya lah. For all, uh, sebenarnya okay. Okay, thank you very much Puan Mazdilah. So Puan Azlina, so it's my turn. So my turn is usually a technical comment. Eh? I will scrutinize each of your presentation based on whatever that you present it, uh, today. Um, you want the hardest one or the simplest one first? Okay, well. <laughs> Never mind, I just go straight away. So the first yeah. one, um, for your first uh, primary objective of the first presentation, for me is satisfactory because you are able to justify uh, the levels and the mechanism of uh, protecting the workers and so on with regard to the use of the chemicals. So that one is uh, superb. Um, and then the videos also is good, but it's not your video. So, however, it actually we need you to sort of make a review of the video. So it's, it's quite good actually. Never mind. It is a future improvement in the in a way. And then for your poster presentation, I, I think whatever that already been discussed by Paul Azina and Paul Azila is very clear. You have to choose whatever that um, hazards that you are trying to focus. So in this case, I believe you are focusing on the physical hazard. By right, you don't have to... Um, um, explain uh, different kind of um, perceptions of different kind of hazard agent. You just focus. If you are talking about noise, noise. If you are talking about heat, heat. If you are talking about extreme temperature in terms of the cold stress and so on, just focus on that. Because in the end of the day, the marks and also the explanations that we are trying to give is actually based on what speciality that you are trying to focus on. Let's say you are talking about the heat stress. You supposedly talking about the uh, current recommendation guided by our uh, Department of Professional Safety and Health. So you are supposedly should talk about the heat stress assessment. So what kind of the physiological changes that are going to be impacted by those people are exposing to the heat. And then you have to sort of reflect whatever that uh, the environmental conditions that you as the assistant pharmacist or whatever that working in under your organization being exposed with this kind of hazard. So that kind of explanation um, that we are trying to look into, not the macam theoretical part that you are talking about, okay, acclimatization and so on. So I believe that one can be made some sort of uh, updating. Eh? So in your IBES, I will extend the period uh, so that you can make some changes and then please do some resubmission, okay, for your poster eh? and also your video just now. Your presentation slide, I think, is quite good. Okay, so your the another um, things that I think need to be improved is actually your MSDS and risk assessment. MSDS that you are going to choose and you currently choose. Okay, if you can go there, okay, let me see. You are actually using the R statement. So the R statement is the old version of the CPL regulation under our country punya legislative, which is the 1997 CPL. By right, you should use the new current class regulation 2013, whereby you need to reclassify. Reclassify this one means that you have to provide the S code. Uh, okay, cuba anda pergi dekat anda punya uh, gambar uh, CSDS ni, cuba pergi yang bawah, ada gambar tengkorak, betul tak? Ada gambar tengkorak, lepas tu ada gambar R statement. R statement ni adalah risk phrases yang datangnya daripada lama punya model ataupun GHS lama. You can revise sebenarnya. So this kind of details that we are going to look into if, if you are talking about um, current assessment of this chemical. And then this chemical sepatutnya tak boleh mix sekali dengan high rate. Sebab high rate biasanya untuk cover yang non-regulated ataupun non-specific regulation. Kalau chemical, dia mesti buat CHRA, chemical high risk assessment. is another specific assessment. Bila I tengok you punya safety data sheet ni, I believe this the 
exposure and the risk are not well established. Uh, so saya just nak tanya Fitri. Yang ini based on this uh, florin eh, awak nak bagi dia risiko berapa kat tempat kerja awak? Fitri? Berapa risiko dia? Sederhana, tinggi? Yang this one lah, yang um, R, R46, R60, R61 ni? No, this one is being used in your workplace? Uh, for OC, yes, we use okay. this. Uh, And in, in your understanding, in your understanding, what is the risk classified for this one in your workplace? Actually, the, uh, the risk are... Uh, the risk are serious actually sebab dia, dia may cause uh, fatal for the uh, uh, fertility uh, may cause damage for fertility or unborn child so may cause a genetic effect uh. so genetic means something that we cannot see so actually uh, actually dia kesan banyak lah so kalau untuk R, 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 R statement ni uh, may cause a uh, high readable uh, genetic damage may uh, impair, impair fertility hmm. so it's just see I, I agree with that Maksud saya sekali, Encik uh, Fitri, when you um, assessing this kind of chemical hazard, chemical hazards to health, you have to justify. So based on this CSDS, kalau saya buat risk assessment dekat tempat kerja saya, I'm going to rate this one as significant risk or non-significant risk. That is the first one. Lepas tu, you kena cakap sama ada high risk, moderate risk ataupun low risk. Mungkin dia adalah sangat potent ataupun dia sangat toxic tetapi engineering control is in place. So that kind of thing that we are trying to measure from your understanding. Yeah, agree. There is a very risky um, component. There is a lot of hazardous material inside this compound. However, the way you discuss in your safety data sheet preparation is just macam muntahkan balik safety data sheet ni daripada manufacturing. Sebenarnya bukan. Anda kena sintesis. Uh, so, information dia dekat sini yang perlu disampaikan kepada masyarakat adalah jika ada bahan ini di tempat kerja saya, dia adalah low risk, high risk. Kenapa kita kata low risk walaupun bahan ini berbahaya? Sebab dia diguna sedikit je dalam satu tahun. Ha, sebab awak yang tahu bahan ini diguna berapa banyak, betul tak? Walaupun dia very high risk, tapi dia guna sekali je setahun. Kan jadi low risk tu, betul tak? Lepas tu, adakah bahan ini digunakan when when you manipulate this kind of substance, you are going to manipulate it inside a very contained area, uh, in a specific containment area such as a biosafety cabinet, lamina flow and so on. So that is creating an additional negative pressure of the ventilation system and so on and make the uh, life of the operator much more safer. But that one is not being explained. So I hope that you can make some sort of changes lah, updating uh, towards that. Walaupun high rate you dah buat. I agree high rate tu dah ada. Ada juga chemical pun you masuk dalam high rate which is for me is okay. Just make sure you also include the safety data sheet lah yang you dah buat. Kan you dah buat safety data sheet lah lah. You tak buat dia punya risk classification. So the cohesiveness of your findings tu tak comel lah. Ha, cantik, okay. Satisfactory tetapi dia need to be improved in the future. So I hope also the other students can try your best to to repair lah based on this comment. But I think it's okay lah, fair lah. Sebab so this is your first presentation lah. It's okay. So the the next one, I believe this is the last one lah. When I watch your presentation, can you please just go to the uh, third final slide of your presentation? Third final slide. Your third final slide is actually you are talking about the risk level and also the appropriate control measures and so on. Okay, this one. Okay, you are specifying based on these specific activities, right? Activity one, two, three, four, five. There is five activities that you focus. Correct or not? Yes, correct. Right. Okay, can you please go to the next one? Okay, risk assessment. Okay, you justify already the high, low, moderate and so on risk. And then you are talking about the risk control. So this number one through two five is actually your your suggestions towards the number of the uh, appropriate control measures kan? Anda punya hierarchy lah nak buat yang mana satu. Betul tak betul? Betul betul. Tapi theoretically speaking, I think you need to look back. Cuba anda tengok balik benda-benda yang sangat high risk. High risk yang mana? Cuba tengok high risk anda, anda bagi apa control measures? High risk is number number three, uh, reconstituted cytotoxic drug. Okay, so, then you tengok apa you punya control measures? Control measures saya, uh, I choose uh, um, at Sorry, saya tak dengar lagi. Boleh buat ulangan semula? Apa yang awak pilih untuk control measures? Sebab uh, uh, ada putus-putus. Yes, uh, I choose uh, administrative, uh, administrative control. Uh, administrative. Job yeah. Okay, see? 
benda high risk tapi you ambil hierarki bawah-bawah tahap-tahap biasa uh, Jadi ah. kita, uh, you know, uh, saya nak try eliminate tapi kita tak boleh eliminate so I try my best lah um, last time um, diorang, um, diorang dah sediakan engineering control using BSC, uh, BSC code cabinet dengan clean room so these are just uh, things that can be done lah No, uh-huh. that that is that is a very good idea. That is what we want you to become. We want you to think like that. We want you to suggest that one, not suggest this one. See, that is the idea of this presentation. Actually, we want you to to think like that. Oh, I think, not 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 okay. Eliminate cannot because this is a very important task. Okay, then I want to suggest to the management to install this thing. Ah, itulah yang kita nak. That is actually the output of this presentation. We not you to consider your management yet but we want your consideration based on your understanding. Uh, based on that, baru you boleh cakap ah, kalau tak nak beli bio safety cabinet tak apalah tapi at least buat job rotation. So that is how um, this one I want to comment and emphasize lah. I agree maybe you cakap job rotation ni because you consider your jabatan tak ada duit, your jabatan need some fun, need some sort of engineering um, advices and so on. No, that is a different story. But based on your understanding, attending the courses, you should suggest based on those hierarchy. Okay, faham eh Fitri? Apa yang awak buat ni saya faham. Uh, cuma bila jadi seorang yang mahir dalam bidang ni, you jangan ikut, you jangan consider orang dulu. You kena consider by right. Ha, lepas tu baru kita boleh fikir alternative approaches. Okay, saya harap yang lain-lain pun faham kan? Eh? Yang tengah dengar live ni, anda jangan consider sangat jabatan. Jabatan tu boleh consider nombor 19. Nah, itu dah diajar dalam kelas. Ikut by right dulu. By right dia mesti by law lah. By law mesti ikut macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. Then consideration that is, uh, other things is come uh, other, uh, after that lah. Saya bukan kata tak sesuai job rotation ni tetapi ini high risk. You assess and then you find out this is high risk. Kalau moderate ataupun low risk, it's okay. High risk you must put it at the prior, priority. Awak tengok eh nombor lima. Cuba baca nombor lima tu. Uh, nombor lima uh, 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 risk con- I look at uh, special room for assemble di satu sikit biasa. Uh, you kata uh, allocate specific room. Ini sebenarnya bukan engineering control. Dia sebenarnya isolation je. Kita buat isolation je. Isolation. Okay. Lepas tu kalau awak tengok engineering yang nombor lima ni adalah sebenarnya medium risk. Betul tak? Cuba tengok atas. Uh, you know? Nombor lima. Nombor lima, uh, sorry, nombor lima uh, medium, nine. Ha, see, ini, ini yang saya maksudkan. Maknanya uh, awak mesti membuat pengatur caraan. You must uh, able to reorganize based on the specific um, identified uh, ranking hazard. Bila buat risk assessment ni, you must rank it. Mana yang high, mana yang moderate, mana yang low. Based on the high, this kind of suggestion should be the primary Uh, concern. Okay, faham eh? Ini dua contoh je lah. Saya boleh komen semua tapi saya nak awak faham lah. So far saya nampak awak dah faham dah pun. Sebab awak dah cakap tadi sepatutnya saya kena suggest biosafety cabinet and all this ventilation mechanism. Maknanya awak dah faham lah. Cuma the way that you emphasize need to be the one as the primary lah eh. Yang lain-lain tu boleh jadi sebagai the backup plan lah. Okay. So itu antara komen-komen penting lah. Technically that is what we are trying to measure from your understanding. So far so good. Taniah kepada Mr. Fitri. Please uh, hold on after this. Jangan uh, tinggal lagi studio ni. Okay. Kepada anda di luar sana. Ada apa-apa lagi nak tambah Puan Azlina dengan Puan Mazila? Tak ada eh? Okay. So kita akan teruskan sesi ni. Kemudian saya akan uh, kepada student yang berkenaan boleh ready. Uh, kita jumpa lagi sebentar lagi.